shocking twist in a story. The woman's husband is behind bars. Larry Hoagland's facing attempted murder charges. Trying to kill his wife. His wife, his wife with a bomb. No one was more shocked by Larry Hoagland's arrest than his own family. It never once occurred to you that Larry could be behind this pipe bomb. It really didn't. Despite all the tension at home, I didn't even think that he would have been a suspect. But she had suspected an affair, even questioned him about it. He denied it, and she let it go. Now from her hospital bed, the harsh reality. Not only was her husband a cheat, he may also have tried to kill her. You've been lying to us, cheating. It's like, I don't know you. Who are you? He just quit caring about, I think, Connie as a person. And he became so self-involved with himself that that's all that mattered was him and Leanne. Leanne Rupert, the other woman. Larry insisted a cheating heart was his only crime, not attempted murder. But for Connie and the kids, their empty bank account and those frequent so-called business trips to Pennsylvania suddenly made sense. Leanne and Larry had a history. They were high school sweethearts and had reunited three years earlier. Teenage love quickly morphed into middle-aged passion. He wasn't just having an affair. He was leading a double life. He considered that his home. Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. Leanne's house. He refers to it uh, all the time in his texts to her. Can't wait to get to our house. Can't wait to get back home. Their text messages at times read more like a romance novel. For authorities, it all added up to motive. You have been my dream girl for as long as I can remember being in love. I need you, my sexy man. Life is like dry brown toast without you. Can't stop thinking about all the love we shared here in our bed. Right now, I just want to hold you, naked. Do you love me enough to make me your wife and make things right? Yes, I will make things right. How many times were they texting each other? Sometimes 50 to 100 times a day. A hundred times a day? 1,800 pages of uh, text messages. And it wasn't just texts. Take a look at all these photos. Leanne and Larry at the Santa Monica Pier. Then just two months later, Connie and Larry at the same pier. And while he's with his wife, he's texting his lover. Just got to the pier, lots of people. That is not right. I want to be there, that is our place. I wanted to take a long, cool ride that made me feel close to us, but this is almost torture. I love you. And his brazen charade would continue even during bedside vigils with his wife, stealing away into the hospital hallway to text and take a photo of himself for Leanne. Well, he's at the hospital with his wife, who's been grievously wounded by this pipe bomb. He's texting his mistress? Yes. 40 minutes after he got to the hospital, he was out in the hallway taking pictures of himself. He sent it to her email, says, I love you, Leanne, I wished you were here. All the pieces began to fall into place. While the case against Larry as a cad was airtight, Detective Luke, teaming up with ATF agent Matthew Beals, was building a case against Larry as a would-be killer. Remember that unexploded pipe bomb found near the Hoagland home? They believed it had fallen from underneath Connie's car, where Larry had taped it. But investigators needed proof. I just had this thought from other investigations, you know what, has anyone gone through his wallet yet? And so I went through all the scrap paper in his wallet, and lo and behold, I found the telephone numbers for the first bomb. That's right. Two numbers connecting Larry to the cell phones used to detonate the bomb. Investigators say he tried unsuccessfully 18 times to set off the bomb. So that was huge in just confirming uh, that we were on the right track, we had the right guy. Last April, the man who had led a double life without batting an eye went on trial for attempted murder. During Larry's 19 months in jail, Connie never saw him. But before she could write him off completely, she had to face him one last time. What was that like? It was hard. Um, I do have scars on my legs. There's a rod in my foot, and my hearing is bad. Um, it's just a sickening feeling to look at someone who tried to, to, you know, blow you up. And for him to act like he didn't do it, it's just unbelievable is what it is. In court, Connie looked into the eyes of Leanne Rupert, the woman Larry loved so much he was willing to risk everything, 
even abandoning his own family for hers. She says she knew nothing about the plot to kill Connie and believed Larry when he said he had filed for divorce already. He was going to move back to Pennsylvania and he was going to move into my home and I, I often told him I didn't care what he had or what it was. Uh, he could come with the shirt on his back. And then to a hushed courtroom, Larry did something criminal defendants rarely do. He took the stand in his own defense. Can I ask you directly, are you having an affair? I, I told her that I was not. Why would you do that? I was, I was being less than honest. I, I was lying to Connie. And in a moment of astonishing candor, he revealed his true feelings about divorce. I, I, I never really believed in divorce. You weren't going to tell your wife that you're getting divorced until when? It, it sounds so cold, but I, 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 just about when I was leaving the house, it's, it's, it sounds very cowardly, but that's, that's what I was going to do. Larry's defense fell apart when he explained how those phone numbers ended up in his wallet. Prosecutors say his answer stunned the courtroom. They were given to me by a, a transient that I called Jerry. It'll stand out in my career as one of those moments where you realize this case is going better than expected. You don't know a last name? No, I don't. And I don't remember the, the specific wording, but he said, Here, take, here's my phone number. How many times has that happened, that somebody takes the stand and out of the blue comes up with a new theory? It just doesn't happen that often. Right. I think Larry truly believed that he could say anything he wanted and the jury would believe him. But they didn't. Verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of the crime of attempted murder. He was sentenced to life plus 13 years. Larry Hoagland's life of lies was over. I love that jury. A lot of them came up after and hugged us and, and just said, you won't have to be afraid anymore. Your dad continues to deny to this day that he had anything to do with hurting your mom. Ever waver? No. Someone that I would call my father isn't someone who's going to cheat, lie, and steal. Trying to kill my mom, he lost that right and that privilege to be my dad. So he's not my dad anymore. He's Larry. Today, Connie is divorced. She is a survivor. Connie is an amazing lady. She walked through the shadow of death and came out dancing. In the end, Connie says she had to forgive Larry in order to forget him. It's a miracle I can even walk and that I'm even alive. I have a new life and I don't want to think about him anymore. And at the end, I just had to forgive him.